What's going on, guys? Thanks for tuning in to Wingate Solutions. I hope you're doing well. Out in the woods today, so I figured I'd bring you a quick uh, video talking about bipods, specifically the Harris bipods. Uh, I've been using them a long time. There's a lot of different models. Sometimes it's confusing. Guys don't know which model to get. And there's definitely pros and cons, and uh, that's what I'm going to go over today. So appreciate you guys tuning in. All right, so Harris bipods. There's a lot of different models, a lot of features, a lot of different versions, and it can get really confusing if you don't know what you're looking at or if you don't know what features you want. And it can be annoying if even if you do, figuring out which model number is the right one. Uh, so hopefully I can break some of that down for you guys so that you order the right version. Um, and I'm going to hopefully simplify it so you kind of have a better idea of what you might want out of your Harris. These things have been around forever, decades at this point they've been used. I've had these two for somewhere between 10 and 15 years. And they've been awesome. And uh, I've done a few things to them, like adding the ADM pick rail quick attach. Awesome upgrade. You don't have to. I went, you know, over again, over 10 years without that. And I never had any issues. I also didn't know how awesome it'd be to have the quick detach. <laughs> but if I was just going to be putting this on one rifle and maybe every once in a while swapping it to another one, or if I wanted to leave it on the rifle most of the time, I would just go with the standard stud mount that most of them come with. Um, and a quick will flow right into that. They also make Picatinny versions. They're not, they don't have a uh, throw lever like this. They're going to be ones you're going to, you know, tighten on with a nut or whatever. Um, so if you have a quad rail or a pick rail and you want to go that route, you can. And they also have M lock versions, which if you're going to mount it on a rifle and kind of mount it and forget it, uh, M lock might be a way to go. It's probably real streamlined, but if you do want the ability to remove it, um, I'd get the sling stud version because it is toolless to remove it off the gun. So anyway, yeah, pick which style of attachment you want and go from there. One of the other things guys need to decide is what size they want. The two main sizes that are recommended are 6 to 9, 9 to 13. It's kind of hard to tell you what size to get because it's based on size sometimes. Like I'm a taller guy, so field use, I like the 9 to 13. But for like bench shooting, the 6 to 9 might work best for a lot of guys. And if you're really only going to be shooting at the range on flat, perfect terrain, um, where there's not a lot of elevation to your targets, 6 to 9 is probably going to work for a lot of you guys. If you want more real world, uneven terrain, like I'm out in the woods right now, this, the 9 to 13 is going to work way better for me. Also, if you're shooting on any type of longer ranges that have elevated targets, so you're shooting up a hillside, you're going to want the elevation of the 9 to 13. So something to think about. 6 to 9 is a lot sleeker, smaller. Like A lot of guys like these on their SPRs, things like that, because they're not going to extend past the end of the handguard as far. They're just simpler. But the 9 to 13 probably has a little more practical application. You know, something to think about. Um, or get both. <laughs> if you want to try them both out or have a buddy that has them, I would recommend kind of figuring out what size works better for you. But yeah, figure out size, figure out the attachment method. And then we need to talk about swivel or non-swivel. I'm going to straight up just say, get the swivel version. And that's going to be the common, you know, theme that most people are going to say. Again, unless you're only bench shooting. If you're only bench shooting, you, you're probably going to be fine with the non-swivel. But the swivel works way better for real world applications. It's just going to give you that, that adjustment side to side. Like, you know, like this is what I mean by swivel. You get down on the ground, you're just barely canted, the rifle's canted. That's no bueno if you're shooting at distance. Being able to swivel the rifle um, while having the bipod anchored into the ground is huge because the last thing you want to do is get down to prone, have the gun be offset, then have to like lift the leg off the ground to shoot. That defeats the purpose of having a bipod. Also, if you're trying to shoot hastily, you know, in a quick fashion, Last thing I want to do is have to fiddle around with adjusting the legs perfectly to have it be level. So having that cant built in uh, is awesome. And then getting the throw lever for the back for tightening that down to limit the cant or loosening it so you have more free-flowing uh, adjustment for that cant is really cool. So I think that's usually an upgrade, but getting that little guy as an upgrade is recommended for the cannibal versions or uh, the swivel versions, right? So go swivel. Um, you're not going to regret it. You're not going to wish you had the non-swivel. But if you get the non-swivel, you're probably going to find that you wished you had the swivel. So there's that. The other thing is leg style. 
There's two leg styles. You're going to have notched and smooth. I have both versions. In short, most guys are going to recommend, they're going to be satisfied or happier with getting the notched leg version. And uh, that's pretty much what I recommend. They're cool. They have the button and they're under spring loaded tension. If you press this button, it will extend all the way. So this is a 9 to 13, so it gets pretty long bipod. If I needed to shoot up a hill at distance, it's nice to be able to just quickly press that. It's a full extension. But as you can see, there's these little notches, right? So you're not, you don't have an infinite adjustment. You have staged adjustments, right? But that's nice and simple. And I've never felt like I needed to have it right in between two. Um, that's the pro again of having the swivel is that gives you that little bit of uh, wiggle room, right? Because there's times you'll go to prone and you might need to extend one further than the other to get yourself prone, right? If I was on uneven terrain and then having a little bit of that can't also can help if it was kind of an awkward position. So that's what I recommend. Um, so most people are going to recommend going with the notched swivel version of your size preference, right? So to close it again, I need to press and then close. Um, it can be a little bit awkward to go from uh, like extended to stowed again, um, which is a pro to the smooth one, which I'll get into in a minute. But let me throw this on a rifle real quick and kind of demonstrate something for you guys. So again, these QDs are awesome. Really cool. Like just like that, I could take the thing out of a pack and throw it on this rifle or have it on one rifle at the range it makes it easy to swap between a few different rifles but it is a costly upgrade so you know might be something you might want to work up to i ran just the regular swivel stud mounting versions of these for over 10 years somewhere between 10 10 and 15 years um and i didn't really know i needed this till i got one and then it made sense but you can get away with just the standard mount especially if you're not going to be mounting uh, swapping it around too often but the cool thing about these notched version legs, and I haven't really found a way to do it on the smooth, is you can do a paracord mod. Some guys will actually make it so it's a pull handle. They'll pull the paracord. It'll deploy these spring-loaded legs. Really cool. I tied mine so there's like kind of a perfect amount of, a te of tension that I can pull on one leg. And I'll try to do it slowly to show you. Pull on one leg, and then it will deploy the other one. So can't do it closing it. You can see it'll kind of half-close it. Not that big of a deal. But deploying it, just pull on one. They both deploy. I think that's really cool. Costs next to nothing. Um, makes it makes using these in the field more expedient. That's one of the pros of these Harris bipods that a lot of other bipods that are way more expensive can't do. They're a little more annoying to adjust, things like that. The Harris's are just proven and proven, proven, simple, rugged. They're they're awesome. So yeah, there's that, the notched version. Most guys are going to rec recommend that. So smooth version. And I'll mount this real quick and I'll show you guys. I've had this one a long time. If I could go back, I probably would have just gotten it in notched. But at the same time, I like this one, so there's no point in me getting rid of it. Cool thing about the smooth version, smooth leg version, is I can go from shortest to tallest, like easy, super easy. All I do is pull on it. And it's locked so that's a cool feature of the smooth leg and then to collapse it back down to the six six inch position all i do is press the spring loaded button and it's closed so it's real simple to go from min to max that's something that's a little bit more awkward on the notched leg pros and cons right um so i like that and then because it's smooth you can have an infinite amount of adjustment where you can lock it specifically where you need it I haven't really felt the need for that, but if it's something you think you'll need, it is cool. The annoying thing is doing it one-handed, which I've done it a long time, so it'd probably make it look a lot easier on camera doing it right now. Um, but I, you just pull it to where you want it, turn this knob, and it tightens down and locks it in place. It works. The notched version is better for like real-world field use, I think, in my opinion. Um, but this isn't like that awkward that I felt the need to get rid of it. And if I want to uh, collapse again, I just turn the knob and it'll collapse on itself then. It works. Negative is I haven't figured out a, re a way on this specific one to do that paracord uh, mod because of the way these smooth legs are. There's not space between here like there is on this one. I don't know if you guys can see that. 
So it's a lot easier on my notched version to do that paracord mod. This one, I haven't found a nice, simple way to do it. Um, but maybe I'm just a dummy. I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, this version's cool. If you want something you can real quickly go from min to max, but you're not going to care as much about having a specific height in the middle. Um, so the GPR or something like that, this might actually be handy for some guys. Um, but and I say this with a little hesitation. I still say go notched. Um, notched and swivel and then uh, whatever size you want and I think you'll be happy I hope I'd an I answered some questions on these um, I didn't really get into the model numbers I guess I'll mention those now because I wrote them down the two main ones I recommend like we already talked about the swivel notched um, are going to have the two model numbers based on the height you want so the 6 to 9 notched swivel is going to be the S-BRM series um, and it's going to vary depending on what attachment method you get. But if you want to just search that S dash B R M Harris bipod, and then just double check in the description that it has those features you want, just in case, you know, I messed up or in case they have it labeled as something else, there are a million different versions. So there might be some variance to that, right? But it might get you started in the right direction. S dash B R M six to nine Harris swivel notched legs. And then the, uh, 9 to 13 swivel notched is going to be the S-LM. S-LM should get you somewhere started. Um, so it's not quite as confusing. But uh, do a little research. Make sure you're ordering the right one. Hopefully now you have an idea of the different feature sets they have as far as attachment method, height, the leg versions, whether it's swivel or not. Um, figure out what you want write that down on a post-it or something and then make sure when you order it, that version has all those features and you should be good to go. Um, so hopefully that helped a little bit for you guys. I know it's annoying getting into this and not kind of understanding the different versions. It takes a long time. I still have to look it up and write it down and which specific ones were which. Um, so no big deal. Hopefully this helped. And uh, if you guys like this content, please consider subscribing. Hit that like button. Uh, give me a comment down below. I really enjoy reading them. Let me know what else you want to see from me in the future. If you have any questions, anything like that. If you have any tips and tricks on these things, or if anybody has a way to put the uh, power cord on the smooth leg one that I haven't thought of, that'd be awesome too. Point me in that right direction for that. And uh, if you want to support us in any other way, check out our website. We have our custom-made slings and sling retention straps. Um, that is uh, linked down in the description. But uh, yeah, until next time, guys, I really appreciate you. Get out and train.